rejoice in worship today, and uh, we rejoice doubly. Uh, a double portion of God's Spirit will be poured out today upon uh, two young children who come to the water to receive the promises of God as we rejoice with the families of Briar and Berkeley as B names. I'm going to do my best not to stumble over that, but I assure you that even the pastors trips and falls, God is constant and God knows your children and receives it in his loving arms today. And we rejoice with you today for all the promises that are poured out in baptism. The great promise is that we are reconciled to God and we need that reconciliation throughout our life and that's what we begin with in our worship today. As we confess our sins before God, we know that forgiveness is ours. Let's take a moment and then we will enter into that confession. congregation, please rise. Brothers and sisters, we gather for worship today as we live our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit so that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Family of God, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the great promise that is ours in Jesus Christ. Let us claim it now as we come honestly before God in confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you, God, the word and the deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. The promise that is poured out in baptism and that is ours each and every day is that in Jesus Christ we are reconciled to God and that the fullness of God's forgiveness is ours each time we turn to God in confession. And so I invite you now to enter into that forgiveness because we know that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. The call that ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the gospel. This is good news. Let us lift our voices to proclaim it as we join in our first hymn. All hail the power.
continue to praise God, our next hymn, Beautiful Savior.
the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from St. Paul's letter to the church in Colossae, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. And the Apostle Paul writes, May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is in the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. On this Christ the King Sunday, we, uh, we always have a song. We turn to God's word in different ways as we're going to sing it today. I'm going to invite the choir, uh, our quartet to come forward, who will lead some of the singing. You see the refrain of Psalm 8, uh, and you are invited to, to uh, first listen. Some of you long-time members of Trinity will have heard this before. We've sang it a few times. As you pick up the tune, you're invited to join in the chorus. And the verses the choir will primarily sing. But please, join your hearts, your voices, as you find yourself in. Psalm 8.
like to come and join me out here at the front, I would invite you to come on down.
and Luke writes, When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked Jesus, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. For there was an inscription over him saying, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? We indeed have been condemned justly. We are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then the thief said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. <clears throat> Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard a story uh, about a father who took his son out to fly a brand new kite that he had received for his birthday. The boy had been very excited about this. He'd never flown a kite before and he thought this was going to be wonderful. It's one of those beautiful, I know I shouldn't be talking like this in the middle of uh, November, although the weather's been pretty nice, but it was one of those warm, just gorgeous summer days where there's just enough breeze to fly a kite, but not so much that you feel gusted over, right? And they go to the park, and pretty soon the father expertly has that kite up in the air, and it's climbing higher and higher up, and they're letting the string up. All you kite flutters know how that works. And before long, they had let out pretty much all of the string, and the kite was soaring high up in the sky. And the little boy held the stick for a little while, and he felt the kite dance and tug and, and, and play in the sky. And he turned to his dad, and he said, Dad, Dad, I want the kite to go higher. Make it go up even higher. And the father replied, I can't make it go any higher. We've, we've let out all the string. There's no more string to let it out. And the son complained, and he said, well, then the string is holding it back. Cut the string so that the kite can fly even higher. I want to see it way up there. And without even a word, his father reached in, pulled out a pocket knife, cut the string, and immediately the kite began to wobble, a flutter, and crashed to the ground. The father turned to his son and he said, the kite is always free to fly because the string keeps it connected to the one who is in control. The line is necessary to hold it all together. Now you're probably looking at me like, what? <laughs> What are you talking about kites here in November? Christ the King Sunday. Well, I think that just like that string holding it all together, keeping the kite in connection with the one who is in control, so is Jesus Christ. The string that holds us together, that keeps us connected to the source of power, the source of grace, the source of life, God, the Father. We have to stay in touch with Him. And I think Jesus is the string that we see weaving through all of our readings today as well. If you're able to stay through all of that stuff. Jeremiah talks about a promise. God is going to send the shepherd king. The one who will guide his people into truth and justice and righteousness and peace. Who will be gentle. Who will not be like other kings. That is what we celebrate on Christ the King Sunday, right? Uh, especially maybe in this time of political turmoil and, and world nations rising and falling and all these things that we see around us, we look at leaders and we have a sense of what, you know, I don't, we don't have a lot of kings in our world today, but prime ministers, presidents, all these kind of things, these potentates and these rulers, they all grasp for power. They all love the trappings, right? When they come somewhere, the trumpets blow and, and the security details all around them, right? And they make sure everybody's out of their way because they're important. But Jesus shows us what true kingship is and that he comes to serve he comes to be among the people. 
even if it cost him his life, he will give it up for the sake of his subjects. And, you know, God does remarkable things so often. We have two baptisms today, and what could be better on Christ the King Sunday, and what could be better with some of these readings? And, and I'm going to hit you with scripture again, brothers and sisters, so my, I don't apologize for that, but I, I know sometimes it's hard to hear, especially Paul. Where's my lectionary study group? We, weekly we say, St. Paul, why don't you just use English? But he wrote in Greek, so what are you going to do? It's all Greek to us, so I'm going to try and help a little bit to get into the Greek, because that reading that we heard from Colossians, which we should commit to memory, that's one of my favorite passages, the beginning to Colossians and the beginning to Ephesians. Go home, find them online, find them in your Bible, and maybe it's got a little layer of dust on it. Don't worry, that dust won't, it, you know, it's okay to blow it off and take that Bible out and reread it. But go and read those passages because they were baptismal passages. The ancient church spoke them over the people who came to the water to declare over them what was happening. And so I want to give you that reading from Colossians a little bit because it's a word of promise and a word of hope. And this is what we desire. This is what we long for as these children and others come to the baptism. And as you remember your baptism, it is our prayer, I'm going to paraphrase slightly, but this is Colossians, that you would be made strong with the strength that comes from God's glorious power. That you would be prepared to endure everything with patience, all the while joyfully giving thanks to your Father. For he has enabled you to share in an inheritance with all the saints. He has rescued you from the power of darkness. And he has transferred you into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom you have redemption, the forgiveness of your sins. All that is happening as we sprinkle a little water on these children's head. They are being transferred from one reality into a different reality, a living reality, a hope-filled reality. And you know what, I, when I first moved to Saskatoon, I was a poor bum. Now I'm just a bum, because you guys pay me so much. But, I'm kidding, you, you pay me very well, I won't get into that. But I, and I had to ride the bus, I shouldn't tell you I had to ride the bus, I, I rode the bus. And when, sometimes when I rode the bus, I was going a long distance. I, in order to get to my destination, I had to get a transfer. Some of you ride the bus, you know about that? I, I haven't ridden it in a while, so I don't even know, but they still give you a little piece of paper. You say, I need a transfer, and they tear it up. We don't have enough bus riders here. All right, well, they did it today, way back when, I'll tell you what year. But they tear off this little piece of paper, and that little tiny piece of paper enabled me to get off of that bus and to go onto any other bus, and it would help me get to my destination. And this is what baptism does, is it takes us from one place, and it puts us on the path to a new destination. Eternal life with our Creator. And a life that reflects that as we walk it. There's going to be times when the darkness is going to seem real close. We have been overcome. We have overcome, I should say, the powers of darkness through Jesus Christ. But it doesn't mean that the powers of darkness have been completely dispelled from reality. And some of you know that all too well. And I'm not talking only about the spiritual powers that are out there and are very, very real. They are. But I'm also talking about other types of darkness that want to steal away life and joy. Depression. Fear. Doubt, boredom, there's a lot of things that just take away and we waste time sitting there watching the tube or we waste time online and I'm just as guilty as anybody else in doing this instead of entering and engaging fully into the life that God is calling us into. A life that is characterized by re relationship and connection and, and, and peace and love and the things that our world needs so much. And so we come back into this place to be reminded that we are baptismal people that we have been washed, that we have been given a new birth, and we can be reborn again and again and again into that. And we need to encourage one another in that. That's part of what we are formed into a community for, to remind one another, to be that light to one another. I think there's a, there's a beautiful story, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it comes from the Middle Ages, about a new church that had been built. And this nobleman knew that he was dying and this was going to be his last act to the community. And he built this glorious, glorious uh, uh, building and he invited everybody to come in and to take a look around. And as they walked around, they noticed that there didn't seem to be any lanterns. Now this was back in the day before electric lights. But there weren't any lanterns hanging from the ceiling. There didn't seem to be any candles, anything. And they said to the nobleman, I think you kind of messed up. You're contracting. You've got to call him back. There's no light in here. 
and he motioned to the front upon the altar, where there were a number of oil lanterns. He said, each family is invited to come forward and to pick one up. And beside each pew, you will see a hook. And when you are here, this place will be lit. But when you are not, your space will be dark. And our community will be diminished because of that. The Holy Spirit desires to burn brightly within us, to grow in that illumination for this place and for the world. And so my encouragement to you as well, baptismal families, and to us, baptismal family, Trinity, is to stay together, to walk with one another, to reach out to one another. I will confess to you, I have not always done that as well as I could, and if it's left up to me, in fact, I should invite you to come to the back sometime. I got a little prayer, sits back there. It was written by Martin Luther. And he says, if it's all left up to me, it will all come to ruin. Jesus Christ created a community, a people to be together. And that's challenging. It's not always a lot of fun. I will confess that. But it is right, and it is good. And when it is at its best, it changes the world. May his spirit be poured out richly today on you families. We rejoice with you. And may that spirit enliven us and enlighten us for the sake of the kingdom. May God make it so. Amen. Thanks be to God. We have this wonderful king who comes to us in a different way. He comes to us through the cross. It is there he is enthroned, for it is there where he meets us in our deepest need. Let us proclaim it in song. Please rise with me for our hymn of the day, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
Green Book, page 121. Brothers and sisters, we proclaim that in holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity in the waters of baptism. We are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the Church, which is the body of Christ. And as we live with Jesus and with His people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So first I ask this side, who presents this child to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? And now over here, who presents this child to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? Christian love, you have all presented these children for holy baptism. Touch it. You should therefore faithfully bring them to the services of God's house. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As they grow in years, you should strive to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Provide for their instruction in the Christian faith, so that living in the covenant of their baptism and in communion with the Church, they may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. And so I ask you, do you promise to fulfill these obligations? If so, please respond. We do. Amen. Family of God, I invite you to rise as we turn over the page to 122 at the bottom. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we do give you thanks. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters. You created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked, and you saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery and into the freedom of the promised land. And in the waters of Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Then, by the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved Son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death. He has opened to us the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. It was he who made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. And in obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we ask that you now pour out your Holy Spirit, so that Brian and Berkeley here baptized may be given new life. Wash away their sin as they are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given all praise and honor and worship through your Son, who is Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Families and family of God, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus to reject sin and to confess the faith of the church, which is the faith in which we baptize. But first I ask you families, do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil with all his empty promises? If so, please respond, we do. And now I ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was murdered. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time I invite you to bring Briar forward to receive the sacrament of baptism.
I am Stanley Moore. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now, please, if you would bring Berkeley forward to receive the sacrament. John, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. It's made my secret of guys. The congregation may be seated. I will ask the baptismal parties to turn now and to face the front. You may remain standing where you are. Please face toward the front. Now on page 124. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. So we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon Brian and upon Berkeley, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and a spirit of joy, now and always, your presence. Amen. We do one more thing with you here? Two more things. Hang on. All in close. Brian, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Berkeley, child of God. You have been sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen.
uh, I would invite the congregation to be seated once again and to continue to worship God through the collection of our offer.
Once everybody has commuted on this side, we'll move our stations over here, and we will invite you to come forward. Come, the Lord passes.
congregation, please rise. Now, may the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. For we ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to enter into the blessing of God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite now the congregation to be seated. And I would ask if there are any announcements which need to be lifted up at this time. Yes. As uh, many of you know, a few months ago, uh, the provincial government announced cuts to the Saskatchewan Insured Income for Disability. Well, it was announced Monday that that program would be left intact. And uh, the only thing is that for people who move from one address to another, would be uh, hit with a cut for those who are in the program applicants. So we praise God for His. Uh, his move in the changing the government's heart. So, uh, uh, and a thank you to all of you for the uh, prayer uh, prayers you have said to all my prayer warriors. We are always separate for Ratus, always ready. Thank you, Dan. We will be ready for them next time. Thank you. Yes, if you follow the news, you will know the SAVE program, which is an assistance to, uh, uh, we have members within our congregation who have benefited from that program. There was talk within the government of cutting it. Uh, they have backtracked on that. Uh, we rejoice that uh, there will continue to be assistance to those who so often need it. So thank you for uh, lifting that up. There's a number in your bulletin. There's a lot. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but there are some that are coming very shortly. So I want to encourage people to be aware that the Advent Supper will happen on Saturday. Uh, we've got a few young bucks or young those who are willing to haul a couple of tables over from the parish hall to here. Right after worship, please do so. You'll, you'll uh, earn your cookies today. Uh, and thank you to those who brought cookies today and every Sunday. We appreciate that. But next, and sign up and get in the signal. Either that or tell them you check. <laughs> sign up if you can. There's a whole lot of sign up sheets. You go around the corner, there's sign up sheets for two Bible studies for the Advent Supper. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's more yet, but take a look at the sign up sheets. Make sure you're signing up for the right one. And then come and enjoy the supper. It's coming Saturday. Then come back again Friday the 16th for games and fun and, and uh, uh, entering into the Christmas season. Uh, at 5.30, pizza will be provided and uh, an enjoyable time for all families. Uh, we hope that you can come. There's a couple that aren't in your bulletin, and I want to lift that up. The caring committee has been hard at work reflecting upon some things that uh, we can do as a congregation or they can invite us into. We're going to do another Advent handout. Some of you will remember last year we got about 200 Advent calendars and we went and we hung them on doors and stuck them in mailboxes. We're going to do Christmas ornaments. So, Friday, December the 3rd at 3 o'clock, if you can, and uh, we don't have a sign-up sheet for that, but tell me or tell Myrna or Alice uh, so that we know who's coming around. Friday, December the 3rd at 3 o'clock. Remember that? But then on the second, I don't know, whatever the Friday is. I can barely tell what day it is now. You're lucky I'm here for Sunday morning worship at the time. So come on the Friday. I don't know the day, whatever it is. Come on the Friday, 3 o'clock. We'll stuff bags and then we'll go out into the neighborhood. And that's our way of just offering a gift to the people around us. Appreciation for uh, sharing this neighborhood with us. Oh, yeah, and then go grab some chairs and tables and bring them over here right after worship. Good. All right. Enough said. Read them. Don't listen to me. Read the announcements. That's probably the best way to be straight about everything that's going on. But we do celebrate more, less. You have a whole bunch of hats on the day on the hat. You're giving away hats. Hey, you've got the same head size as less. Uh, you can have many hats, but not as many as you used to be, I guess. So uh, take a moment. If you're looking for a new cat, please put a bunch out on display. Help yourself. You're always going to bring vegetables, and now you're bringing hats. I don't know what's left. Please help yourself. Thank you for doing that and providing that. We celebrate with those who will celebrate this coming week. Reg and Leslie Cross will celebrate an anniversary, so God bless you in that. And the birthdays that I have are Jason Wilkinson, Jamie Polson, and Cedric Simonania. So may God
God bless them. Let's pray together. Wishing that today. Happy birthday.